Hello viewers, um, time for another teardown. Now after the uh, humongous um, CR500 Kodak reader that I took apart uh, last time, I decided to go for something a little lighter. Um, and this is certainly, <laughs> uh, probably weighs less than a kilo. Um, so what we have here is an Allaire Cholestec LDX. Um, it's a cholesterol testing machine. Prick your finger with a little device and uh, drop the blood into um, a small little cartridge. It goes in the front here. Um, and then it does some kind of analysis on it and works out your cholesterol levels. Now, unfortunately this doesn't work, otherwise I'll show you it working, um, or at least turning on and doing what it should do. I don't have any of the cartridges that go in this, um, so I wouldn't actually be able to do a test anyway. Um, so looking around this, it's just a, a fairly cheap white box. Um, it's made by Allaire. Um, there's an address on the back from San Diego, it's made in China. Now, as I said, this doesn't actually work. Um, all it does is, uh, well, when I first got it, it didn't work at all. It was just, it, it was just completely dead. So I've had a quick look inside already. Um, and I did find an, uh, an internal fuse which had blown. Um, I swapped that out for a wire link <laughs> just to see what it does. And it does actually power up, but it says calibration failure. So it's obviously gone badly wrong. So it doesn't work, but that's all right. We just want to take it apart anyway. Okay, so the way this would work is the patient would give a sample of blood. Um, this can just be through a finger prick device. Um, the blood sample is then placed into a, a small white cartridge, well, it's actually clear, um, which is placed into this machine and it does an optical analysis of uh, what is in the blood. Now, um, the way this is gonna work is the, there will actually be a reaction cell inside the cartridge which is placed into the machine. So uh, the cartridges are a sort of one use thing. Uh, once the blood runs into them, it, there'll be some kind of chemical reaction. Um, some kind of reaction thing will go on in there and the optical parts of this machine will analyze that and um, determining from from, uh, from that what the levels of cholesterol are. Now exactly how that's actually going to work, I'm not entirely sure. It could be it passes a, a known frequency of light through the sample and records what comes out, so it might be looking for how much the signal is attenuated by um, the reaction cell or it might even give off light. Um, I'm not entirely sure, I'm not really gonna go and find out to be honest, but um, there's obviously gonna be some optical, probably light source and a sensing uh, device in this uh, to actually do that analysis. Right, let's have a quick look at the base of this. Uh, we've got some regulation stickers, serial number, blah, 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 a couple of screws there. Uh, we have the power input jack um, that is just, uh, it says there, 9 volt DC, so there's obviously a separate plug pack with this. Um, interestingly, it is evil and it is uh, center negative. Um, there is also another port on the back there with a, uh, uh, what looks like an RJ45 style connector um, that goes out to a printer, which could actually print off the uh, results of the test. And uh, just here we have uh, a little module that's plugged in the back here. It's obviously some kind of sensor just there, and I can just see under that metal band there, it says ROM pack. Um, so there's obviously a, uh, an interchangeable ROM, uh, presumably for firmware updates that can just be inserted in there. So it's got some kind of sensor in there as well. So I'm uh, not quite sure what that's doing, why that wouldn't be inside the machine. So at the base here, we've just got two um, T10 security screws. I just have to remove this drawer from the front. This was actually originally attached with a couple of springs, but they were uh, practically impossible for me to get back on after I had this open before. So, <laughs> yeah, it's no longer fitted. Okay, so uh, on the front panel, uh, we just have um, the switches. So some nice uh, clicky clicky push switches there on a um, flat flex cable uh, which just run through to a connector on the PCB and uh, up here we have uh, um, just a what looks like a bog standard um, 2x16 uh, LCD display module. So we can see a little bit more of the workings there we have the uh, draw mechanism which uh, slides out we have a control board and there's a, I can just see a motor just there, so that probably drives the, uh, the drawer. And one other 
screw. Remember, we have to take out this. So that's the uh, ROM module. So we've just got a metal frame, um, PCB on top, and the, the sled mechanism. Uh, looks like we've got some kind of reader device just there. Right, we've got uh, the drive sled thing here. Uh, we've got um, a flat flex PCB uh, with uh, through hole components on it. That's kind of kind of funky. Um, there's um, this device here seems to be some kind of reading device. Um, it looks like a tape head under that. So I wonder whether the cartridges that um, are placed into this um, have some kind of magnetic uh, strip on uh, to identify themselves. Uh, we've got this uh, motor drive just there to operate the actual sled. Let's see if we can just wind that out. So um, this is where the the little reaction cell would go into and then feed back and then in the back there it looks like we've got some openings there so there's, uh, that's probably where that optical sensing is going on. Um, just down in here we also have uh, an optical sensor uh, which just senses the position of the, um, the drive sled. Yeah, so what we have there is a little magnetic uh, strip reader um, on a little compliant compliant mount. Drive motor, just a what looks to be a completely basic. Um, DC motor um, looks reasonably well made. Um, there's um, decent brushes in there with uh, a spring loaded mechanism, so um, it's a decent quality motor. So we've got uh, on here, it looks like we possibly have some kind of heater. Uh, let me just um, carefully disconnect this sensor. Um, this uh, patterned arrangement on this uh, flat flex uh, looks like some kind of heater to meet that. So it's obviously temperature dependent, whatever reaction is going on, or it's to keep the sensors at a, um, a constant temperature. In fact, there could, there's a there's a three-pin device just in there, so maybe that's a temperature sensor. So maybe they've got a little temperature control circuit going on here. Um, we've got uh, four optical paths here, um, and they do appear to be connected in parallel. So maybe there's, uh, these two bits are actually identical and there's uh, possibly two separate things in the reaction cell to produce two different types of uh, reading. Okay, that's the uh, flat flex removed. Um, we actually have four diodes there. They're called D, D5, D6, D7 and D8. Um, we have another set up here which is D9 to D12. And there was um, the other set just here, which is D1 to D4. So um, there is actually three um, sets. So there was uh, these ones that were removed um, went into 
went into these slots. We've then got this row on the top with the um, thermal heater on it, and then there was the other set underneath. Um, these two devices here, this is a National Semiconductor um, JR12ADE3, uh, and it's also got LMC written on it, but no, any, no other number. And this one is a um, JR13ABE3, um, also has LMC6001, which is a, um, an input current uh, amplifier. Um, not a lot going on there, so that's that. Right, these look like um, a set of uh, photodiodes. Um, there's a couple of different types in here, um, so they're probably doing different, uh, slightly different frequencies. Um, and I would I would suspect that these are the light sources. The uh, resistance of this heater uh, seems to be about 40 ohms. Now, obviously, I don't know what this was actually um, what voltage this was running on. The main circuit probably wouldn't be running on nines, probably five or three volts or something. So, if this is uh, five volts, then that would have been about uh, 0.6 watts heater. We have a look at the PCB now. Um, so, there's the power input and the printer output. Um, the fuse that I replaced was uh, was just there. I just budged in a bit of wire to uh, to bridge that. Um, there is a voltage regulator just there. Um, let's, what we'll do is just have a look at the main components first. Um, so we've got an ST um, Timekeeper ba battery back RAM. Um, so that's a um, battery back RAM and a clock as well. Uh, we've got a, a GAL device, um, an NXP, that's probably the processor, um, an ST Micro IC just there, um, an analog devices chip just there, that's probably the analog digital converter, and some other bits and bobs. We'll have a look at a bit closer look in uh, just a moment. Um, so it's all on one side. Um, I think it's a four layer board. Uh, but all the components are just on this side. We've got a rather large buzzer um, just there. Okay, so this device here is um, Analog Devices AD7528. Um, it's not the ADC at all. It's actually a DAC, uh, dual 8-bit buffering multi buffered multiplying DAC. So uh, now obviously needs some DAC control for something there. The NXP processor is a P80C31SBAA. Uh, that is a 8051 CPU. Um, we've got 4K by 8 ROM, 128 by 8 RAM, um, three 16 bit counters. Battery backed RAM is an uh, ST Micro M48T12 150 PC1. Um, so that is a 2K um, SRAM and real-time clock. Okay, last little bit to look at is this uh, ROM pack. Um, so this plugged in the back obviously has the uh, firmware on it and it feels like it's just gonna look up pack fairly easily. Looks like long lefty. Uh, that looks like it, uh, that sensor just plugs in plugs in just there. Uh, so on here we have, uh, this is a Lattice IM4A5-32 which is a 32 macrocell CPLD. And this device here is the uh, the actual memory uh, which is an AMD um, AM29F002B uh, which is a 2 megabit um, flash memory, uh, it's organized 256 by 8. Looks like we've got uh, the version number on there, 3.41. Um, got a four pins there, that's probably a programming header. Um, and then we've got this connector here which went through to this device here. Um, and to me that looks like a um, probably a temperature and humidity sensor. Yeah, I've just noticed that uh, one of those holes is actually open in there, so I wonder whether this might actually be doing barometric pressure as well. Right, well that's pretty much it, there's not much to see now. Um, I hope you found that interesting, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.